So we are going to begin with the teaching now, but before we do so, everybody please uh, make an aspiration of what it is. Tani <laughs> And in making this uh, aspiration, we need to think that uh, we strive to attain Buddhahood in order to uh, establish other beings in the state of Buddhahood or assist them in their liberation. <laughs> Chujia so the uh, focus of Paltru Rinpoche's the propitious speech from the beginning, middle and end is uh, meditation practice on Chen Resig and how to go about reciting his mantra. So yesterday we talked about how we can go about a pra- approaching his practice and chanting his mantra with an attitude of devotion and as well with an attitude of compassion. And today we are going to go on looking at how we can engage in Chen Resig practice and reciting his mantra uh, from the point of view of shamatha meditation and as well as from an insight or uh, vipassana meditation. Noya <laughs> <laughs> 
dorjise în pa, tani top jug goni dorjise în pa, tani gumni, tani un banzer sato hongzi ata, iarna yike gya pa yigya, doni tani dug dug tani jangwa, tani shikare nam jin na to tani shikare, tani shi na pe yang po haliba ga tani shen lup chimbo tani top chimbo re, tani Papa Shariz, Gumni, Tini Teon, Tini Tobjit Sangi Gumni, Tini Dubab Shagnayan, Tini Dranja Riz, Chigbari, Teon Chokore Riz. Usually when we engage in confession practice, uh, we do so um, using uh, Vajrasattva practice. Um, in this practice, we confess our wrongdoings in, or- in order to purify our uh, accumulated past negative karma, We recite the 100-syllable mantra and we apply the four opponent forces. This is a very excellent practice to do. And um, it's also possible that we can confess our wrongdoings in the same way um, using uh, Chenresig as our support deity uh, rather than Vajrasattva. Dangzanzin Biblon, the street pig, Tesla Liton Long should give it so, Yarmchot Marvin, Kondi, Kala Dola, Kala Mo, Kinzen Yangi Kerla, Yudu, Sanji Kanjingo, Lama Ji, Kurden Sanji Kanle Lamping, Lama Shari, Zutan, Yermit, that Pildon Shik, Kela Yudu, Dong, Dushan, Dushan Lam Gum, Kujim, one of Chit, one Jib Daniel Lama Shari. Ransim Lamarashina, Wamshir Zok, Rangwan Rang, Tup Nangani, Yutu Dung, Kora Nawa Zanti, Lonami, Nantel Harishina, Zantun Zok, Tahnang Wamjin, Rola, Tishu Kurn, Kora Tungani, Yutu Dung, Yerm Nam Tang, Mama, Lumanke, Dershaku Gum, Yara Kanjanga, Kana Nawa Tiji, Chimbushko, Nantel Haki Nani, Yutu Dung, Dibjud of Nyendub, Lerna, Tupatam, Chichut, Yuki took by Chuchida, Dadam Pampi, Sondan, Dumdermit, Tarton, Narsi, Yuki, Yuki, Dumni, Namto, Jena, Namto, Nyamto, G. Rana, one, the Dina, Dabgartel, Chotten, Sender, Solm, that Sharius, Livjil, Hintum, Nani, Yuki, Dum, Cancer, Torma, Shatrum, Drolla, Mo, Nanton, Gana, Sa, Atenichi, Chant, the Yigit, and Chesit, the Gari, Nanton, Gana. Ah, Sata, oh, yeah, non ton gana, Sata, Salan dip zio sare, oh, the answer. A nimid lap shak semi golan sal, golan sal, chushu yon zong money, you two dung, jerdan dao shambam son jin dull, tul, rutu nyan kornyaji, tap kikun, tap pijan la nyam to lot or mu, sendi ler zong money, you two dung, denjin rogan, jen mid me laughter, darnau dunsu nyambu, chuchi tit. Sorsaro <laughs> Ransom Ruston Nime Churkina, Mabju Nimur, Jarna, Ransar and Chet, Shermit Chichun and the She Chusen, Ruston Jim Brajola, you took Dum, a Nipit, Oya Dati, and Chitit, and Mambos, the song of Tan, that so Tamchipot, and Namdrang, Guni Mamboson, and Sir Dunna, this Chipar in Dundu, Tienata, Ona, Shepatit, Par. Jemuda or Tendiz in the Tinanga so on, I will be the Nitsaka Hashiton in the Jamna, the Kunlao Patiso Parchir Shindosare. So the verses that we, that Kempo has just read, uh, contain um, many different categories, but they can probably all be uh, summed up or easily understood by going into more detail with a few key terms in the verses below. Tani Ola, your pizza cacassiti, the ne jernet and lantong of gum jablik, the near nat chimbos, the near song and the tena, the nitsama, the same like a bojaroji. And in the verses that uh, come now are some very important key points regarding shamata and Vipassana meditation. So everybody, please uh, listen well. 
ane bir tane incevir, cimta çöten gibi ane ane bir an ortu, ane diye nime tamla şibar diyor, zehri niyemdi ane yedir don, zone dedi, diye çoğut ni jirni, gom ne dedi, jirni gön ane dedi, papa şerez ki gom batan dedi, papa şerez ki niyemban donlu, dedi zor sungan duz. So in the verse that begins with with calm stillness mind cut following moving thoughts. Uh, this verse is um, describing approaching Chen Resig practice and chanting, uh, reciting his mantra um, with um, shamatha meditation or on the basis of shamatha meditation. Jamso barlab jinda tani sem ka nala nam tok dama dama bo mam bo mam bo yong kap kap se geva ka nam tok tani kap kap se mar geva ka nam tok tani ka nam tok mam bo zo tani ta yong re te sem te tani mar ne jiva ka nga ne ne tap tani ta ne me pa tani zo re tani te yindi tani ka zo sem te tani per na jamso ko barlab ta ko tani nam tok mam bo te yo sona so uh, first to talk about shamatha meditation our minds as they are in their ordinary state are very tumultuous like an ocean with many waves our thoughts, some of them virtuous, some of them non-virtuous, continue to arise. And so our minds are very far from still or calm. And in this uh, turbulent state, it's difficult to meditate, it's difficult to contemplate, and so this is why it's necessary to bring the mind into calmness. Nyantu lila deni gom tsirte deni ngomba nzota teso nala mambo zdeni de sonduk teso tamje botarta pena ngazo boke ina teso ta jachimbo zde nyamlin chege mare de boke de pecha nala de nyantu tamang ge deni gom jablu jene gom teso sama yo yo sama yore cha sang yore ta deni boke ina chimbo zde nyamlin chege mandu de zo de ma zo deni nyantu zo ta pena uh, there are many different methods of shamatha meditation, um, and shamatha meditation practice is primarily found in the uh, basic vehicle or the listener vehicle of Buddhism. There are many different meditation practices that are described in the uh, Abhidharma literature. And whilst these practices um, are present in the uh, scripture, the Tibetan, the Tibetan canon, nevertheless, a shamatha practice is not something that's widely engaged in in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. It's something that's primarily um, emphasized in the Buddhist traditions of places like Burma and Thailand. <laughs> Then he looks red, have she, Sanak a little red, and your Sanak a day, Luki, the need, Jenny Gomia Tega, the Nina to Boga, and not so the day Gumgundus. So, uh, in uh, Tibetan Buddhist practice, um, there are, um, even though Shamata uh, practices exist in the uh, scriptural tradition. Uh, nevertheless, most of the goals of shamatha practice or shamatha practice is um, achieved through uh, meditation methods in the uh, Vajrayana, of the Vajrayana sort. Then if Pejana Nazo Sangaka, then if Pardo Tixit, then if Pardo Tixit, Java Pardo Tixit, Java Tindigna Layena, then if Jerni Gumser Mandava Chixum, then if Chigri, 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 Gumlu Mandava Chixum, Yore. In the um, Tibetan uh, uh, Book of the Dead, for example, there are 13 uh, different shamatha practices that are outlined. Then it is so smart that the Nyamsa Lena, the Nazo Musutan Sina, the 
Chabayena, the Nichawa, Mayan by Chumbayena, the Nimusu in Nathan in Yamsilin, Nathan in Yamsilin Chuchu, then dig a bear, Saru, then the Samatin de Song or it. And it's very clearly said that anyone can ga- engage in these practices, regardless of whether they are monks or ordained practitioners or lay practitioners. Then it's your tongue is your near Gumserti Tola, then it Jachimbushini, then it long mambo trunk, then it ruba mambo goni, Jerni Gunser, then it halipa yabu, that you long down ruba goni mambo, then it Jachimbutin de Song Yonkento. And in terms of um, uh, scriptural uh, explanation or textual explanation of uh, uh, the Shamata meditation method, uh, uh, Tsongkhapa's explanations are very thorough. Tan dina la sombate, then he long mambota, ruba mambota, then the jachin boot, then in your jachin boot, then the song of Marit, tap de pochini, mangrabo, not rabochinita, jane gum song of yours. In his work, he doesn't uh, explain or doesn't uh, set out or communicate shamata meditation in a way that is very complicated and elaborate. He sets it out in a way that is very easy, easy to be understood, in fact, almost like uh, a set of uh, practice pith instructions on shamata practice. Tanita, Nipitani <laughs> Uh, usually, in terms of our minds, we're very fixated on uh, phenomena in the outside world, sense phenomena, things we see, sounds we hear, uh, touches we feel, tastes we taste, etc. We're primarily concerned with uh, assessing whether they are good or not, whether it's something we want to achieve or not. We uh, spend relatively less effort and time on understanding the nature of these thoughts themselves. The matzang atso sim kumruk bata tsarik tati sogonala tarong atso sim zeti gangi yang hako yam marij kashi ke zina lapa chigre zee kashi ke marij zee tindi zinda ma so banda mandro yabni de ma to ba tarong sim zeti ngoni gangi ganglan zumu zugu te yang hako yam marij. What actually the mind is, is something that scientists and uh, philosophers uh, have a lot of debate about. Um, It is not conclusive from their point of view what the mind is. Some say it's the brain, some say it's not. In in any case, it's very difficult to point the finger exactly at what the mind is. ジャンバーがてにんじてんばてにむすいんなえんあらんそうせんてらてんにてにしょろねてにんがそうしゅしゃまんぼまんぼしぐよれしゅしゃまんぼらてにしゃばじゃぶよれしゅしゃまんぼ
we take the example of our eyes um, using our the sense organ of our eyes it's possible to perceive all kinds of images big small of different kinds of shapes but while it's possible for us to use our eyes to see all of these things we are not able to use our eye to look into itself to see what it is like and in terms of our mind, is the fact that um, we spend and uh, we use our mind to uh, perceive and judge things in the outside world, but uh, seldom use it to look back on itself, is this due to the fact that the mind is incapable of doing this, incapable of looking into itself. No, this isn't the reason. The reason that we, uh, the mind doesn't look back or look into itself very much is because we don't use it in this way very often. We're not in the habit of directing it to do this. So today among us there are obviously some students of Pema Wurseling who have completed long retreat periods of three or up to six years and then there are also students uh, probably who are um, beginners, newcomers to Buddhism. So if you are someone who has never practiced meditation before, then um, from uh, this point on, it's extremely important to look into what in fact the nature of the mind is that indi indi nga tsu sem te la te ni te muk ta te na wa ta te so ta man ja wa ge te ni kwa ran ran la te ni cha chu chi yo re te kan re zina pe na nga tsu muk yin na te ni jam ban thong ge re ma to te ni kwa ran thong ge ma re te ni re te yin na nga tsu sem ti te ta man ja wa te ni kwa ran ge shu lo la te ni sam lo ta na shu lo ge te ni chu man bo o shi sha man bo kan ge shi tap ge re uh, the one characteristic that distinguishes our mind from our other sense organs, such as our eyes and our ears, is that in addition to being able to look outwards and perceive phenomena and uh, information in the outside world, it's also able to look back into itself and um, perceive the inside of itself. <laughs> So if we're going to try to find out what the mind is really about, then this is not something that we are going to be able to do by looking at it with our eyes or listening to it with our ears. And even scientists who apply all kinds of uh, machines and apparatus to test the mind in order to find out about it, this is not going to be um, a the only way um, 
this is not going to be a conclusive way of finding out about the mind either. What's necessary is that the individual um, engage in uh, practice, meditation practice, to look into their own mind and find out in order to discover what it is and how it works. I had any tongue at all, same teeth in Shalola, Parmartan, in Nala, sir, Tavi de Capsu, Coron Candide, something at all, the dad, Deba Maung Batini, the Tarta, the Chu Mambo Mambola, some Lomatani, Coron Candide, some Milamson, sir, Loni, Shitavi Nirkovna, the Nikoranga, the Nirkovni, Matoyo, Marie, the Niti, Nani, Garons, and Tongarezi, the Coranga, or Nirkov, the Natinita, Coranga, Nesser, Nesserani. If a person uh, turns toward their mind and abides in a state of calmness without uh, thoughts, generating thoughts about the past, about the present or about the future, then there are primarily only two uh, things that they are going to observe. The first is a state of um, thoughts arising and the second potential state they may observe is one where no thoughts are arising, so like an ocean surface without waves. So when someone abides in this uh, state of calmness, experiencing their own mind for themselves, uh, then this is what we refer to as stillness. Nam <laughs> If uh, we are abiding in uh, this state and many thoughts uh, generate, some of a virtuous nature, some of an unvirtuous nature, some that are meaningful, some that are meaningless, generating in a succession, a continual succession, like waves in the ocean that continue to crash upon each other, then this kind of situation is what we refer to as movement. So if one uh, turns to thinking about uh, what the nature of the mind is, or rather not thinking about it but directly experiencing it, then these are the only two states that one could encounter, one of either stillness or of movement. So if one looks into one's mind and uh, finds it in a state of calmness without thoughts arising, then this is they will have encountered a state of stillness in their mind. <laughs> Then he 
so if we uh, uh, come to rest in our mind and we find it in a state of calmness and equanimity, then we seek we should seek to um, abide in this state and um, in abiding in this state watch the nature of our mind in this state of stillness. And if uh, thoughts should arise uh, from this state, then we cut them, attempting to um, continue to remain in a state of stillness and calmness. It's um, necessary, though, if we are going to remain in this state of um, calm abiding, that we have a method um, to assist us in abiding in this state. Just simply trying to do it without having a method at our disposal will be very difficult. Oya uh, and in terms of the uh, methods that are available to us, there really are a vast number. In Aside from the 13 methods that I mentioned before, there are other numerous methods in the Vajrayana tradition, and actually it's due to the plentiful nature of uh, shamatha meditation uh, methods or techniques in the Vajrayana tradition that Tibetan Buddhist practitioners generally don't adopt the or pursue the shamatha meditation techniques in the um, Theravada tradition. Mukti jilang aso sem ten ro re ze mukti yu ta mu ta ma bo she de na muk ji sang aso sem de ten ro re de in di de ni muk de de ni chi ge to la ta ni de ni she go re ze yang me ka she ka she ge de ni muk she na de ni yang ta ja ma ja ma bo tong ge re de ma bo tong di de ni ta sem la na tong ma bo ke ge de de ni de 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 sem yak bo shi ni de tap ge ma de sam ni de ni muk zum ni de ni gom jam ke de ni yo re de na muk zum na in general, our mind, our thoughts follow our eye sense, so the various things that we perceive around us looking this way and that, our mind follows after them and then thoughts arise. So it is uh, for this reason that one technique of shamatha meditation is to focus our gaze on a single object. Um, many people uh, feel that actually keeping the eyes open uh, causes their minds to wander, uh, wander and therefore think that during meditation it's better to keep one's eyes closed. This actually isn't the case. We need to keep our eyes open. However, we focus on a single object um, in front of us. <laughs> Ah, 
Yangnati main bi rumun dah tinggi kanglah tanah tu cokor itu tinggi lah tane muk telah tadi ni sem yang telah tane tadi sem kanalan ramen ramen bo masam ni muk ni bodoh dah sem tang cepat sama tadi cikat tulah tadi pertan ni tadi si ni tadi nuluk oh tadi ke gom jablik jernih gom luk zian yari te jernih gom luk cikir So one technique is to focus our gaze on uh, some kind of image or object in front of us. It could be a stone, it could be a picture, it doesn't really matter. In any case, we focus both our gaze, our vision, as well as our mind single-pointedly on the object in front of us and remain uh, concentrated on it. This is one potential technique. Then you also poke a lama so nala, cashe de la garba javiori, the Gotangasu dota, shanta, tindi latani, Jenny gumnati, abo marite, gumsrianta marez in it, the garba jam contingi, yore, riti ina, tatting also late tambu patso, tindishina, tin yabu yores, late tambu patso, tindishina, gum jamna tap de boyor, chicti teri, niti, penangaso tarta ina. ตีจีจัมบันยิรจักกุมยับเดินขึ้นตีมีมังบูสตีนี่ตัวตาหนุ่มชกลาอเมริกาตันตัวสูงนั่นดูอาทิตย์ตีสุดเราเห็นนะความ
can take a small tanka and place it in front of us and focus our mind and our eyes um, with uh, great concentration on the image in front of us at the place at the heart of the deity or either at the place between the deity's eyebrows and uh, focusing single-pointedly like this, we uh, gain a very um, clear um, capacity to visualize this deity. And when we uh, have reached a sufficient level, then it's no longer necessary for us to rely on the tanka, and we are able to then bring to mind the image of the deity ourselves. Um, this kind of meditation method is... Uh, described in both the sutras and in the tantras, and in fact, generation stage uh, visualization practice in the Vajrayana tradition begins off with this kind of training. So these are two different shamatha meditation techniques. Then you think that the chichum can this go raise in that then you sort of not so gum yam king quarrel ranga then you chung chung then you sort of yan chut then you chimbo in them chugans agree. Then in the part of the Trigangzeri, then it Trigang Manchut, Surmuji Yanchut, or Tindig Tanka, then did the Mato Tanga Sundi Nala Yonkenda, then did the Tanka Chimboti Latana, the Yakbuyo Mareti, Rumu Chimbo, Rumu Rapa, Tinda Latana, Tini Sim, Tindi Tatabgumari, Sim Partini, Jamdore, Namtok Mambo Yongore, then it Chongsong Lata Gore, young Hajang Hajang Chongsona young. Then you make a recommarate in a sormoji and chuta, then it drugang manchut in these lata gore, tangatela ramni jigore, ramni aboshini, then it and dishini, then you mukatadi, then the gore. So, in terms of the size of the tanka that we can use for the second type of uh, shamata meditation, it should be in size not too small and also not too big. So, it can be anything from a uh, length of four fingers in width or up to a uh, or length or a length up to half an arm span the length between one's hand and one's elbow anything bigger than this such as the size of the tanka on the walls here would be too big um, the, the details or the size of the picture would be too much to focus on in any detail and so many distracting thoughts would arise uh, by the same token if the tanka were too small then we wouldn't be able to see it so it's uh, necessary to Find an image that's the right size. Oh, that is not bad. Then you smart can reason that you are so sad and do that. Shang lion tag mari, tanka lion tag mari, gang lion tag mari. Then you seem coron coron la tani, Jenny drip good. The Jenny drip drips are some of the money. Jean shoot it is so. We've got the first method, which is to focus our attention on some kind of neutral object. The second method, which is to uh, focus our uh, concentration on a deity image. And then the third type of uh, shamata technique is one where we actually use the mind to look at itself, to focus on itself. And of the different shamata meditation techniques, this one is the best. Ottavo so for this uh, kind of shamatha meditation technique, it's also uh, necessary that we have, um, we have concrete methods or concrete techniques for being able to uh, focus our attention on our mind. And in respect of this, um, the uh, nine methods for taming the mind, which um, are contained in both the sutras and in the tantras too, um, are a uh, source of instruction in this area. Um, of course, the full nine of them, they're very complicated they're in terms of the uh, explication on it. It's quite in-depth. However, for our purposes as beginners, people starting off, the first three of these nine methods are really what we need to be working with. <laughs> Then, you 
then is Jerni Gumser somebody did they some along or two chickens? So today, what I would uh, like to explain are the first three methods of the nine methods for taming the mind. Tenita somebody can resin at Tenita Sim Korangla, Tani Tenita Jibgore. Um Yeah. Okay, so uh, looking at the mind is the uh, method that's going to be, uh, is what is going to be taught today, and three methods in respect of this. Oh, yeah, that is somebody can go raise in a tante. Sim, you sim latani, Jane Gumserti, Tini Lama Mavam, Kanki Mavam Yamso, Tini Songanala, Tini Jane Gumserti, Nyonyon, Tabdi Botini, Yori, Yashuti, there is. And uh, in so far as these uh, three methods are concerned, uh, Mupan Rinpoche has given a very clear and concise teaching on this in his writing. Um, aside from Lama Mupam, of course, there are also many other lamas who have given teachings on this. Uh,ตีนี้ลีนำนำชุดนั่นเชื่อกูเรตีนี้ลงรูปสารกูเรตีนี้ทำมาชีพชั้นชุดชั้นตีนี้ทุนเจียดเนี่ยตีทุนยิ
use the mind to experience itself. So we shouldn't be um, investigating or looking analytically into the nature of our thoughts to see whether they're good thoughts or bad thoughts or looking into to seeing, trying to understand analytically what they're about. Um, rather, we are approaching our minds um, experientially in order to um, gain insight into them. Namtokzere, so we can understand this idea of uh, directly experiencing something um, by using the example of tasting something sweet like honey. In this um, situation, when this sweetness touches our tongue, then we experientially know the taste of sweetness. Um, it is not necessary to be told um, this is sweet, that's not sweet. This is, in fact, not an effective way of having us understand what sweetness is. Rather, when we experience it directly, then we know. However, if we were to be thinking about the taste of sweetness, deciding whether it was tasted good or tasted bad, whether it was good for us or not good for us, whether the taste, the sweetness was the taste of honey or the taste of milk, then this would be um, uh, understanding honey using a discursive um, thought, uh, through using discursive thought. For example, if we uh, were to take uh, the example of turbid water, water that had earth poured into it, then it would be very unclear for a period of time until the earth settled to the bottom and then at this point the uh, water would become clear and transparent. And it's the same with our minds. We start off in a state where uh, there are many, many different thoughts arising, but by sitting uh, quietly, it's possible for these thoughts to become increasingly less until we uh, find ourselves in a state where there are no thoughts arising. So when there's no wind, for example, then we don't see uh, waves on the ocean. Uh, we have the surface, the still surface of the water, but no waves. So when we are practicing shamatha meditation, we need to uh, directly experience and directly um, abide in the experience of our own mind. We uh, shouldn't be analytically 
um, investigating the nature of our thoughts, trying to understand if they're this way or that way. Um, we need to be experientially uh, abiding in the state of our mind, however it is. Uh, so, uh, when we are able to uh, bring our minds to a state of calmness where thoughts are no longer arising and we are experiencing our minds directly, then we should simply abide, rest in this state. And uh, through doing so, we will be even though our eyes will continue to see and our ears will continue to hear, um, discursive thoughts will not arise following these things. And so we will be able to see the mind clearly. And in saying this, I am not um, describing a particular doctrine state of practice. I'm actually just talking about what the mind is uh, from the point of view of common knowledge. <laughs> ตีตกลาเจ๋งนี่ตีเจ๋งเรตาตีนี่จุกซาตาจุกขึ้นตีนี่หนีออกมาเรสิครั้งครั้งตีนี่ก็รังจินตีตกลาเนี่ยนะต
pure state like water where all the earth is completely settled to the bottom and then the mind is very clear, very limpid and we are able to um, see um, what it is actually like. It's also possible that if we uh, run, if we run very fast, uh, across a flat surface or up a hill, we push ourselves into the point where we can't run any further and then we throw ourselves on our back and take a rest that our mind will automatically also arrive at this kind of state. <laughs> The <laughs> It's also possible if we go into a very noisy and bustling space like a market, etc., uh, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of noise going on, a lot of uh, clatter. That by uh, bringing our mind back to uh, this kind of practice, that we may also have a kind of experience for perhaps a very short time, just a second or even kamare gachare. Gacha, mia. Yeah, for one second or perhaps just half a second. Karmasji, 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 even drum. Oh, let's say for uh, one minute or for half a minute of uh, great calmness and quietness in our own minds, even though there is uh, so much noise and bustle going on around us. Or, uh, for example, in a, in a place like this where the, the sky is very nice and blue and clear and there is uh, good sunlight, we can go to a mountain top and uh, find ourselves being able to meditate in this state too. And uh, this kind of state is very similar to states that are described in the uh, scriptures of the Mahamudra and uh, Dzogchen traditions. And there are a lot of people who uh, don't really know too much about <coughs> meditation who think that they are practicing some kind of Dzogchen state. But in actual fact, this isn't Mahamudra practice, it's not Dzogchen practice, this is Shamata practice. It's also possible that by working a really hard day of 10 hours until you're exhausted and then coming back home and flopping on your couch that your mind might find itself reaching this state too. And this is uh, not absorption <laughs> state either. It's just called going into a daze. Yeah. 
And whilst this is the case to start off with, this is what we need to do. Our first step is this. And then from our second step and subsequent steps, then we can uh, progress towards Mahamudra and Dzogchen practice. Ore so when we find ourselves having or arriving at this kind of uh, very calm and still meditative experience, um, we seek to continue this state or seek to continue to abide in this state. And um, this is what we refer to as the first of the nine practices of taming the mind, the placement of the mind. So this um, uh, process or method of uh, seeking to continually abide in this state, so after we have uh, arrived at this state of calmness and equanimity to uh, seek to and make effort or not make effort um, uh, to uh, abide in this state is what we refer to as the second um, method for the taming of the mind, the continual placement of the mind. So the continual um, attempt to abide in this restful state is the continual placement of the mind. Uh, many people are actually uh, unsure, they don't know in um, how to go about placement of one's mind um, in shamatha meditation practice. In terms of other contemplative meditative meditation practices, such as contemplation on impermanence, etc., then it's clear the subject or the topic that we need to place our mind on or place our contemplation on. Um, in so far as um, shamatha meditation practice, when we talk about placement of the mind, however, many people are unsure about where it is we place it, what it is we're placing it on, how we go about placing it. <laughs> Jimson <laughs> 
Now, many people have the mistaken idea that there is a mind that needs to be placed on something, like my hand placing this watch on the table. Uh, they have this understanding of what placement means, but this is in fact not true. This is an erroneous understanding. So when we abide in the experience of the mind as we were talking about before, then this in itself is placement. There's nothing additional that needs to be done. And when we uh, see whether we can uh, continue or extend this state of experiencing the mind for a period of, say, two minutes or five minutes, then this uh, attempt to continue uh, this state of mind is what we refer to as continual placement of the mind. And in engaging in the uh, practice of continual placement, uh, it's important that we have two tools at our disposal. Tools, just like we were building a house, a hammer or something like this, these are very indispensable to us. And these two tools uh, go by the names of mindfulness and awareness. Jidni so in, in terms of mindfulness, when we abide in uh, a state of calmness without thoughts arising and we are um, mindful of the fact that we are in this state, then this is what we refer to as mindfulness. Mindfulness we use in a, um, a, a lay sense to mean when we have something in mind. For example, we say something, if we're thinking about something yesterday, then we have it in our mind, we're mindful of it. If we forget it, if we don't have it in mind, then we're not mindful of it. So mindfulness in respect of meditation is when we have clearly in our mind what the object of our meditation is. And with awareness, we're really talking about um, a mind that checks or um, is keeps an eye on, is, is uh, monitoring whether or not we are continuing to abide in a state of calmness, whether we're thinking about other things, whether there are thoughts arising. This is what we refer to as awareness. Then 
Naranga nam tok mambo zikiga andu. Ta gum tin juk andu ta mandu samni tinji sam jagna. Ani kora nam tok re sarje tinji kora sam kente kora nam tok re tinji marezi. Shivjeng ke tinji shi jia mare. Tinji shivjeng ke jang tap shi gore jang rambo ni par tinji taya ma tok ba tinji tinji ke tinji chung lan chung ni ta kandi rindu. Ta gum jab andu ta mandu tinji sam jagna tinji kora gum jab bo jab ko na yang par chung ro re tinji chok marez. So in terms of awareness, we don't mean uh, thinking, am I staying in a state of calmness? Am I thinking about other things? Are any thoughts arising? If we were to take this approach, then this would be essentially arising just more thoughts. Uh, This is not what we mean by awareness. Awareness is where we keep watch from afar, we keep check from afar as to the state of our meditative experience. Then it tick up certain jobbats or then is zonzo and our she goes on it is on your resin, jobba zonzo at a lunzo at the new looked as zock and in so go resin. Then is looked as zock the sort in his sazaji or satina par jamni. Then in some can take a coranga yarn bone, a partani, then he can do condo tani. Then it's a gore mato, then in Yetong Landroni, Yarte, Marti, Tinishina, Tini, Zota Lictis or Degmaris or Yambon, Itago, Tindabushi Gosun or it. So um, awareness is uh, also likened to the way that herders should go about grazing their sheep and their cattle. They should uh, set them out to pasture and then they should keep an eye on them from afar. If they were to go right up beside them and try to keep an eye on them, <coughs> then the sheep and the cattle would probably run away. They wouldn't stay in one place. Ta America luta, then New Zealand they luta. So that goes somewhere is charang na la jaja yori. Um, but this is not necessary for sheep in places like America or New Zealand because they are enclosed within fences. Then shirvang aso tindi go. Then ita ti nyamnyung ko thoni kanti go raise na. Then same thing aso tindi ne ne. Then karang ko same thing la nipati yore. Karang jambo shi ne nyamper jang ne dejita. Then karang yabo zin du yota me te karang ko nyamnyung ko go re matoba namtoko ko ya te maris. So the mind does have this capacity to be able to check itself or monitor itself in an experiential way. So when the mind is resting in a state of equanimity, it's possible for it to experientially keep an eye on uh, the situation or the state that it's in without doing so in a way that involves discursive thought. Tandi muk di yef show ta yon show ko mus ho yandu mandu tindi yota me tindi ta gona nge ye ta yon ta tindi machine ya muk me to la ta na tindi muzir ni ka tina mundo ndu ta mundu tina mundo ndu ta mundu ti show ko mus ho yar lang ndu ta mundu ti show ko mus ho yar lang ndu ta mundu ti par ta sar ta tindi machine ya muzir ka ta na tindi nyamper jana ti ha ko reze o ti ja bo zuk go ni nam to ke ndu ta mundu so it's just like if I were to have my gaze focused on these flowers in front of me, um, I would be able to see from my peripheral vision whether or not there were people um, beside me, whether they were standing up or whether they were sitting down. It wouldn't be necessary for me to turn my head left or right to uh, check what was uh, going on. I could just keep my eyes in front of me uh, on the flowers and I would already be able to see through my peripheral vision what was happening. Then yang not so young then young so to buzz it in the young they or is sort as in a penna or makanan it in the jar that in the young and do that man to tank in penna or magandana mak gargaviona tini ganti so latini mumambo or tini jar young and do that man to cause or tagore they are sort as they are then it's sort and so tini young and bo latini Jada is a young and do that, Mother Cosotagore. Cosun Chila and Donita married, young Ramboni, young Mayotagre, Ted on Rabo, Sinning as Sosini, Gumjamni. Then he shivin tea, the Koranga Namtoki and Duta Mandu, Tinny Zirkat in the Yam Yungu, Koya Matoba, O Tanga Namtoki Mandu Tandrukundu, then this under the Koran Namtoris. So we can also describe this kind of um, watch that we keep 
on uh, our minds during this kind of meditation experientially um, through the metaphor of a military watchman who keeps eye on, uh, who from an, enc an encampment from afar keeps an eye on whether there are enemies approaching. And this is not something they do at close hand. They do this from some distance. So in this way, um, in our meditation, we need to, th in, uh, through a kind of peripheral, ex in a peripherally experiential way, keep check of the state of our uh, meditation. We don't do this through checking through thoughts. Is this what's happening? Is that what's happening? We... Um, maintain this watchfulness in an experiential way. Then he Nala, Mambo Sonore, that the Sotini, Kua, Kandis Lingona, Lalin Kandis Tabgona, Peshi Kabo Rezi. So, uh, what we've just described are the first two uh, methods for taming the mind out of the nine. And um, in relation to these, we've also looked at the two tools at our disposal for um, assisting the placement and continual placement of the mind, and they are mindfulness and awareness. Of all the um, complex writing um, on shamatha meditation, um, all of this is ultimately very difficult to grasp what its meaning is without putting it into practice. So experiential um, practice of shamatha meditation is very much needed. <laughs> So then we um, come to the third of the nine methods for taming the mind, and that is repeated placement. So for... Beginners to meditation, being able to abide in a state of uh, calmness is something that is very difficult to do for more than a short period of time, a couple of minutes, say, before thoughts begin to arise again. So when the thoughts uh, begin to arise, what we need to do is to bring them back, to bring our mind back to its um, object of concentration and in bringing it back um, this is what we refer to as uh, repeated placement. And there's something very important that we need to understand at this point. Uh, some people think that uh, when they begin to meditate, they experience so many thoughts arising and they feel that uh, during meditation, more thoughts arise than they do when they are not meditating. It seems that as soon as they sit down to meditate, then their uh, various discursive thoughts just multiply. So 
And many people at this point uh, become quite discouraged, um, thinking that they are not suited to meditation or they're not good at it or um, for whatever reason they become discouraged and decide to uh, not continue with their practice. Um, however, it's important that uh, everyone know that this is, it's not the case that they have, uh, that this is um, due to uh, karmic defilement or a lack of uh, karmic connection to meditation or for any reason like this that they are having this kind of meditative experience. It's actually the same for every single person and it's only the case, it's only for the reason that they don't understand how their mind minds operate in a normal situation that they feel this way. So this feeling when so many thoughts um, arise like this, a multitude of thoughts arise, the feeling of being discouraged and wanting to stop meditating, in fact, is very normal. It, this is the normal uh, situation. For someone not to feel like this, in fact, would be quite abnormal. Then if you don't have a lot of people who are not in the world, you Pale Pale Zikarazi, drunk or trapped in Dua. They tramp into so what any gang but some are married, gang but some matin in Zugu Samatini, Marish, Changi, the Kanji, Kablechim Bujab Gumanduzi. Um, however, everyone who starts off in the beginning of their training is like this. It's like ballet dancers when they begin to dance on point, um, the sore feet and sore toes that they have, all of their sores and injuries. Uh, so, um, not just the kind of uh, hardships that uh, belly dancers have to endure in their training, um, there are also in terms of um, people who are training for all kinds of theatre and um, other kinds of acting and performing professions have to start off from when they're children, athletes, for example, they have their arms stretched or they're not allowed to keep the, their arms straight. They have their bones broken and reset. And uh, these kinds of very difficult trainings are necessary. <laughs> In training in this way, these people will ultimately be able to perform in a very good way and be able to achieve very high levels of sports performance. So if it's necessary to train our physical bodies in this way, it's similarly necessary for us to train our minds in this way. If someone th thinks along the lines that, you know, I'm only going to do something if it's easy and if it's a little bit difficult, then I'm not going to do it. Well, this kind of attitude, regardless of whether it's our Dharma practice or in worldly life, is not going to get us very far. We're not going to be able to accomplish anything with this attitude. 
Then you could so that Kabli Yabki and Naranga Ditola, Naranga Kabli Yamnati, Tonda Yori, the Rentang Dambari, then we Kabli Kazi Yabgona Yabki in Samni, then you would in a seminal at Jabjuk, Yonkin to so, then it Tama, Chuinari, Jithinari, Libo Jon Dreena, Simcom Gujon Dreena, then Sama Quarantini Yabosum Tarchin Dogre. A person who is able to mentally prepare themselves for this kind of arduous training, though. Um, convincing themselves of the value in this training and being prepared to submit themselves to whatever training uh, is necessary in order to reach their final goal will be able to achieve very good outcomes in their actions or undertakings regardless of whether it is dharma practice or worldly activities, physical training or psychological training. Ota Tangi Jarka didn't is lingo, Sambago Tini, Nyantup, or Te Gum Yamkan Samala Te Ugo, Te Menachi Yungumaris. So, when I mentioned before the one extremely important thing that we need to be aware of or keep in mind, it was the uh, necessity of mental preparation for meditation um, practice. Um, basically being aware that thoughts are going to arise, it's probably going to be difficult, it's likely we're going to want to quit, but that in actual fact it's not just ourselves who might feel this way, this is an experience that everyone has. Um, and by being mentally prepared, being willing to um, uh, face one's own challenge and to transcend one's own difficulty, then it is... Um, um, possible that we will um, really achieve uh, victory in respect of our Dharma practice. It's necessary that we have this really strong attitude and courageous mind. Nam to Kiongore. Then in Nam to Kiwi near Captain, as a lamsang or dang and Nam to Kiwi do somebody, Hako go remark of Batini, Tik absentinity, Nam to Kia de Ham Maguna, then he coranga lipu gum gamni, then in Dundu or the Yena, Nam to Tamada Mambo Kini, Karma, Karma Chu, then you got on Latin, Nam to Tatakanal and Johnny Tommy Patentation Dores. So when we are talking about the third of the nine practices, uh, nine methods for taming the mind, repeated placement, we are bringing our minds back our, after they have wandered off to begin with. Uh, it's not likely we're going to be able to abide in a state of calmness for a lengthy period of time. So after a couple of minutes, when um, our minds have wandered off, we need to be aware that they've wandered off and uh, bring them back. Otherwise, it's possible that for a period of five or ten minutes, our minds may have completely wandered off um, onto some kind of different types of subjects entirely. And um, in any case, if this does happen, it's necessary still to bring it back, uh, bring our minds back. Then 
Jambada Shivjiniki Shivjinti Hako Gore. So people with um uh, experience in meditation will know that um sometimes in our meditation uh we don't notice when in actual fact our minds have wandered off when rather small or subtle kinds of discursive thoughts have arisen and our concentration has wandered. Sometimes this can happen uh, for a period of 10 or upwards minutes, such that uh, we waste a lot of time by not noticing how our minds have wandered off by focusing on these subtle discursive thoughts. So in a period of meditation of, or a session of meditation of one hour or two hour, two hours, it's possible that through um, this kind of distractedness we can waste 20 or 30 minutes. So therefore, it's extremely important that we are aware of when our minds do wander off and um, the uh, watchfulness or the monitoring um, capacity here is um, what we refer to with the term of awareness. Um, um, and there's another another rather practical thing that is important here too. Te kang reje nga so gum jab ni te ni ta hal lipa ko te ni ju sim mar jirni ko na la ni ni yapo re ni de de obi ni kapsu te ni lam sang cho cha jag go reje nam to jam ba zko kwarang ko cho ma ji pi ko ni nga so su so rang ko te ni cho cha go reje. And uh, this other practical or this other technique is when we uh, find ourselves resting uh, in a state of calmness and equanimity with no thoughts are, uh, when no thoughts are arising to end this state or to cut it, to interrupt it before the uh, next discursive thought arises. The <laughs> So why is it that we should interrupt our, uh, our meditation when everything is going very well? We're abiding nicely in a state of calmness and equanimity. Why is it that we interrupt ourselves before the next discursive thought arises? Um, this is, um, is, it, is this in fact the way that things should be? Um, well, the reason that we interrupt our thoughts before, um, or we interrupt our this state before the next discursive thought arises, is that as beginning meditators, um, inevitably we can't remain in this uh, state for a particularly long period of time. It's inevitable that a discursive thought will arise sooner or later to interrupt it. So before this happens, we interrupt it ourselves. Tening uh, so, uh, some very good Tibetan practitioners have said that meditation should be ended when it's in a good state rather than ended when things are in a bad or less than good state. It's the same as having two people having a conversation together. If they end their conversation when it's all going very nicely, then they will then have a subsequent desire to continue their conversation next time. And 
However, if two people are having a conversation with each other and they keep talking for a long period of time until they both say meaningless things or don't have anything meaningful to say, then both of them will start to feel very annoyed and irritated. And next time that one of them calls the other up and says, do you want to come out and have some tea and a chat? They won't want to go. Oh, yeah. Then it's not so good. It's not so good. It's not so good. It's not so good. So if in our meditation we interrupt our meditation before the next thought arises, then we will have a feeling of having uh, done well in our meditation, have a had a, of having had a good feeling, and we will also have a strong desire to continue with our meditation and to uh, continue to have this kind of uh, experience. So when we're just starting off in our uh, meditation, we should uh, strive to have many sessions or to do many s sessions, but uh, for each session to be of a short period of time. So we can start off with sessions of five minutes and then gradually work up to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour. And when we find ourselves being able to uh, increasingly um, abide in our state of uh, meditation, then we can gradually increase the period of time that we meditate for in each session. But prior to that, then we should end our um, uh, meditation session after a relatively short period. <laughs> So uh, what I've just described is some very practical instructions for going about meditating. So in the course of um, engaging in this kind of meditation, it is uh, likely that two obstacles, we will encounter two kinds of obstacles, and it's necessary for us to know what these are and also how to go about resolving them. ตะเนปาร์เอ่อซิมกนาลาตะเนจิตาญิดโรยตารอญิดงอมาญิดเมนเคนตะเนญิลานญิลานญิลานดาวตินดิเรนเคนตะเนตาตินดิสมาตอจ
So we can uh, easily feel this kind of uh, dullness in a meditation period of, say, even within half an hour, and particularly in the evening after we've eaten a big meal, particularly a meal with lots of bread or meat, drunk lots of milk or yogurt or something like this until our stomachs have expanded, then um, it's rather common that we feel dull in our meditation. So one thing we can do to help ourselves in this situation is to um, increase the light of the of the place that we're meditating in by opening the doors or opening the windows. Or another thing we can do is reduce the temperature of the space that we're meditating in. So if it's in summer, we can perhaps reduce the air conditioning or um, remove layers of clothing, just wear light clothing. It can also be beneficial if you live in a multi storied house to go to the top story, such as the third story, to meditate. And splashing cold water on your face is also useful. These are some easy methods. So what if you've tried all of these things but it just doesn't do anything, you still feel really dull? Or in this case, then you should uh, cease your meditation session. If at this time, instead of um, putting uh, on pause our meditation session, we force ourselves to continue, then we'll find our um, minds becoming resistant to meditation, developing a feeling of annoyance. So in dealing with our own minds, it's uh, necessary that we use um, appropriate or skillful means if we are too forceful with our minds, if we don't use an appropriate method, then they will become, our minds will be very rebellious and they won't be willing to uh, engage in further meditation. It's possible that we might... Um, find ourselves in a state where just seeing the place where we usually meditate or seeing this cushion that we usually sit on makes us feel very annoyed and fed up. <laughs> so for this reason, it's um, not um, okay to force ourselves and compel our, our minds to do something. The second challenge or obstacle or problem that um, we typically in uh, counter is one where so many thoughts are arising, such a multitude of thoughts are arising that we just simply aren't able to bring ourselves to 
a state of calmness. Shertang at so deni letang bopala, nam to mambo tigre, te, te, muserji mari, te, yorita, te, my, but you hapur to deni, nam to mambo tin, jenny gatola, jones, jones, te, the young car, young matta, but the nigger cook of the yoris. So we're not talking hear about the usual uh, situation that beginning meditators find themselves in where their minds are full of distracting thoughts. We're talking about a particular situation um, aside from this or separate from this when one is just simply not able to bring one's mind into a state of stillness. <laughs> If this is something that um, persists for many days on end, then actually this isn't an issue um, in our minds. It's probably one related to our physical bodies. And so we need to um, approach it from the point of view of healing a sickness. Then also Zama Zalita, then Lipo Gushu Javlita. So we can go about uh, resolving this kind of situation by adjusting our food or um, by having some kind of um, uh, uh, medical treatment for our body by taking Tibetan medicine or Chinese medicine. Um, it's possible by um, relying on these therapies that we'll be able to resolve the problem. In any case, um, it's not appropriate to take Western medicine that simply just cures the problem um, directly by working on the mind. Like taking suppressant medication. Like, um, this is not good to take suppressants. Please don't take them. So what the zamagatoni then you just go raise? Um, making adjustments to one's food and dietary intake intake is uh, much better. Oh yeah, then it is. Then it's jambati tari ngaso kona shabati perna kamba nala oti z me pan ra ota. Then it kamba nala jo chimbo yo pata. Then it kamba na kamba ola sone gom jabna tari kona shabati so doshok tisu de la pangres. And also um, other uh, simple steps we can take to resolve this are the opposite kinds of things to what we just spoke of in relation to mental dullness. So we can increase the temperature of the space we're meditating in, put on more clothes, go to a lower story of our house to meditate and so on. <laughs> But if we try doing all of these things and <clears throat> it doesn't uh, come to anything, then for the time being, again, we can put aside our meditation session and engage in some other kind of practice, such as uh, recitation of mantras or prostrations. Oh, yeah, that is journey gum regress. It is journey gum regress. So by abiding in this state of equanimity and stillness and meditating on Chen Risig and reciting his six-syllable mantra, this is Chen Risig practice based on uh, shamata meditation. 
So this brings us to the end of this morning's uh, teaching session and in the afternoon session we're going to look at Chenresig practice um, based on Vipassana or insight meditation. Tu bien, 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 tu bien